Are you ready for another glorious siege battle? Make sure you get your snacks and drinks, sit back, relax, because we've got a battle of really good players. We've got some veteran players today that are going to be battling it out on a barbarian settlement. Uh, so we've got a 3 versus 3. Really quick, looking at the factions before this one begins. And look at this. We already have got some artillery opening fire on the attacking Romans. So yeah, the first army, we have Rome. So Rome bringing some siege equipment. Of course, they've got very solid infantry. One of the best factions in the game. Just an absolute powerhouse, as they should be. Uh, and then we've got their er, Rome's allies. <laughs> we have the Egyptians. So Egypt is another very strong, powerful faction that is also very versatile. Like, they can be really good on the attack and also on the defense. What happened here? Some troops getting hit by something. Come on, get up, soldiers. And then finally, the final army for the attackers. We have Carthage. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. This is the Seleucids. We have the Seleucids on the attack. So another good faction on the battlefield. So, really good armies, really good factions. Uh, it's going to be tough for the defenders. But let's go ahead and see what the defending armies are going to be. Well, we have Carthage. Carthage is a great defensive faction. We have Galatia, uh, which is a barbarian faction. They can be good, but I hope to see the barbs used aggressively. And then finally, we have Macedon, which again is another great defensive faction that have a lot of hoplites and pikes and, you know, just solid defensive units. So it's going to be a brutal battle today, guys. I mean, it's going to be the battle of just elite armies and very good players. So I'm excited to see how this one plays out. So let's go ahead and do normal speed. It is going to be about a 40 minute battle today. So again, like I said, I hope you guys uh, got your snacks and drinks, sitting somewhere comfortable and enjoy the show. Also, guys, hey, take your time eating the snacks. I know you guys. I know you guys. You get your snacks and you just gobble it up in the first five minutes and you're just like, you're like, ah, dang, my, my snacks are, are gone. Especially when it gets to the very end of the battle and it's like nerve wracking and nail biting and you got nothing to chew on. So take your time, sip on your, your beverage of choice, you know, take it slow. Enjoy, enjoy the battle. Uh, so right away, I'm not seeing any defenders. It's almost like a ghost town here. There, uh, well, okay, hold on. We've got a couple troops over here from uh, Carthage. We've got some Iberian, a mercenary Iberian swordsman. Uh, but being, being Carthage, do I need really need to put in the word mercenary? I mean, that's just their whole army. Uh, so they've got some uh, Iberian swordsmen, and. Um, yeah, it looks like the defenders are taking a more passive approach or more of a bend but don't break approach. They're not holding the walls. They're not going to fight for the walls, which I think is a real shame. Uh, I always say this every time, but the walls offer great archer support with the arrow towers, but maybe they've got a bigger plan you know, ahead of them. You know, maybe maybe they've got this awesome strategy, this awesome plan. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes Carthage. Some more swordsmen, more Iberian swordsmen. They're setting up here. Artillery just like, look at this. Ballista's just like, stop, please, stop, just go away. They're, oh my god, they've almost destroyed it. This thing's firing so quickly. What is that? Whoa! Egypt loses some men there and a siege tower. Why did this fire so insanely fast? Oh, you know what? I think it's because it's player controlled. I think you can fire quicker when it's player control. Yeah, you see that? That's pretty smart. I'm going to be honest. That's that's pretty smart right there. Having the player control it. But he needs to stop controlling it. And he needs to focus on the battle. And here we go. Okay, barbarians are coming up to defend the walls. We've got some Glacian swords taking on the Thorax swordsman. And uh, I, I do like that maneuver of kind of hanging back some troops because it keeps them away from archer fire and artillery fire. And you just push them up once they're needed on the battlefield. Uh, so it just kind of protects their men until the final moment of when they need to charge in. Now we got the Thorax Swordsmen taking on the Glacian Swords. Seleucids pushing in. 
more Thorax Swordsmen. The backbone of this army. There's another Thorax Swordsman who's good. They're going to get a great flank on these Glacian Swords. Very nice. And over here, same situation. We've got these naked swords getting flanked by the Thorax Swordsman and the Thorax, uh, well, they're both Thorax Swordsmen, Seleucid and Egyptian. And Carthage is doing what they can to try to hold here. And we've got some weird formations going on with these Thorax Swords. Oh, look at this. We got some Sobek cultists. Sobek. And then Carthage is also holding over here as well. So let's do some slow motion here. This is actually quite the quick battle. Or not, not quick battle, but this is quite the aggressive, fast fighting for a 40-minute siege. You know, usually it's a little bit slower pace, but we got fighting all over the place. And uh, I'm going to be really curious to see... Well, what the defenders do here, because so far, I think they're having a tough time putting up a defense. Over here, it's a little bit better. You know, like, the, the barbarians are being able to, you know, contain the attackers. But on this side, it's getting a little out of hand where we've got flanking troops and just a lot of troops over here. But, you know, uh, it, it, it does look like the defenders are starting to gain some control here where they're holding back these troops they've got this troop uh engaged with some naked swords uh we also have some troops pushing in uh the mercenary iberian swordsmen coming in to support so carthage is sending in more troops to support this front and controlling and you know containing the attackers Look at this, they're going to try to go through this little flank here, but the Carthaginians should be ready for it. Let's go to the other side and see what the Romans are up to. Uh, so right over here, the Romans are scaling the walls, and this is going to be a big problem right here. These Romans, they're good at killing people, all right? They are good at killing people, and they're good at conquering, and it's going to be tough for these Macedonians to try to hold against the Carthagin or against the Romans. <laughs> But uh, Macedon is sending up some more swordsmen. Lots of Thorax swordsmen. I was kind of expecting to see a lot of hoplites. Hoplites supported with archers, you know, trying to just keep these guys contained. More, more Thorax swordsmen over here. And Rome's just kind of taking their time. Now they're charging. Now that they've kind of, you know, gathered their forces. Oh, nice little Pila charge there. Now they're going to break away. But they did get a returning volley that took out a lot of Roman Roman uh, soldiers, the, the children of Rome. Rome is mother to us all. But yeah, they're also pushing and trying to break through this defense. And it looks like he's just going to go to a defensive Testudo formation, maybe absorb some ammo or just wait for reinforcements to come up, and then they're going to push on Macedon. Let's go to the other side. We're starting to now see more and more of the defending forces, and they're definitely going to try to hold this second tier with a solid group of forces. But again, the problem here is Rome. Sure, you can hold this, this platform, this terrain right here, but if you can't hold against Rome, this is going to be pointless because obviously Rome can flank around and get behind your troops. Uh, let's go back here, though, where the Barbarians are setting up more reinforcements. And, well, the Seleucids are doing the same as well. And it does look like the Seleucids are starting to make a very good push here. A nice flank with the Silver Sword Pikemen who are being used as close-range infantry. They're not using their pikes. Why is that? Especially in this situation where they're taking on an enemy head-on. Just take those pikes out. So here we go. The Seleucids have one over here. And Egypt and the Seleucids are pushing together and pushing back the Carthaginians. So a very good move right there. Small little battle going over here, but again, well, Carthage might be able to win this one, especially with the arrow tower support. But uh, it is a very close little battle going on on this flank. Not that this flank is too important. This is really what's important. And looking at the reserves here, 
Let's go ahead and do some slow motion again. If we're looking at the reserves, it seems that the Seleucids, they still have an elephant here. They've got a lot of these Syrian heavy archers. They've got some swordsmen moving forward uh, here and there. But it looks like most of the Seleucid infantry have been committed into the battle. And it looks like they're getting a nice flank here. They're going to try to get behind the infantry or maybe even go for the archers. Most likely getting behind the infantry because the archers will simply run away. Uh, but let's go back. Rome is going to have a very important job here as well. Since Rome is alone over on this side... Um, you know, I feel like I feel like uh, Egypt and the Seleucids have lost a lot of infantry. More so the Seleucids, because look at this. Egypt still has a lot of infantry reserves. But uh, I feel like Rome is going to have an important part in this siege uh, to try to defeat the Macedonians very, like, decisively. Uh, so they can have a lot of reserves to push on the back of Carthage, who's go who's going to be holding against Egypt and the Seleucids. So a brutal fight right there. And I think we're starting to see troops start to fall back. Yeah, see, we're seeing archers kind of fall back here. And we've got the last of the infantry defending these outer walls. But I think overall, you know, the defenders did put up a great fight and they did... They, they cut ooh, nice little cav charge here right in the rear of the Seleucid fort. That's what I'm talking about those maneuvers right there can can win you the battle and um, Yeah, I think they've done a great job of making the attackers bleed here. It's just was it enough? Is it enough to take this victory against these uh, you know these forces here? But the Glacian Riders Raiders uh, Good use of Cav, you know, doing a look, uh, you know, a couple cycle charges, trying to get some last minute kills before the battle moves on to the second stage of this defense. It's a good move. It's a good move. Again, uh, Carthaginians are getting surrounded and they are breaking over here. Unfortunately for Carthage, they have been defeated. And we've got the Royal Peltis, most likely going to capture this arrow tower or charge in. They're going to go for the charge. Try to break these uh, Carthaginians. But overall, it, it feels like Carthage was holding with the weaker troops. Carthage and uh, Galatia holding with the weaker troops. And they're going to have their more elite troops for the second stage, the second tier of the defense. Rome is really blobbing up right here. This could be a good opportunity for Archer Fire. You did... You know, we did. Uh, we saw it there as the, the other volley. We're seeing some arrows come in here and try to pick off these guys, but uh, it's going to be tough for for Macedon. Macedon still holding over here. Lots of thorax swordsmen for Macedon. Oh, and now we got some Praetorian guard who are uh, marching into this fight. That's scary. That's tough to hold. And more Macedonian forces are advancing forward to try to hold. And look at this. The Romans are starting to waver here a little bit. Look at this long line. Look at this route. Oh, my God. They don't, they don't know where to go. They don't know where to go. That's, that's got to be, like, demoralizing for the Roman army. Uh, no engagements here still. This unit's still in Testudo. Still not advancing. And I don't... Mmm, jeez. This Praetorian Guard could easily be flanked, and that might be what we're seeing here. We're going to see some Thracian warrior, mercenary Thracian warriors. Good call to send them up because they have good armor-piercing damage. And they've got the Praetorian Guard surrounded. But is it going to be enough for such an elite unit? And now that the Thracian have these uh, Romans surrounded, Macedon is going to push forward his swordsmen and surround this unit of Romans. The Romans are struggling here quite a bit. But this is good for the Romans. In the center, they are making a push. And there's a thin layer of thorax swords trying to hold them back.
Let's see if they can hold. And whoa, hold on. Look at this. Okay, uh, Carthage? They're not giving up this flank. Holy crap, they are not giving up this flank. I honestly assumed that Carthage would have fallen back this way and held this point right here and possibly this point over here. Uh, that way they could hold two choke points, right? And then they, they could also retreat units to help the fight against Rome. But honestly, guys, the fight against Rome is going kind of well. And look at this. We had a cab charge of Sally out. I'm not sure what happened here uh, in terms of how much damage, but it looks like it wasn't too much damage. I'm seeing a lot of dead uh, cav of Macedon. Uh, but no, Carthage is going to take a more aggressive approach, and they're going to try to hold this defensive position. You know what they could even do? They could send up, which maybe they have, but they could send archers up here, and they could fire down. You see that? This is actually, this is why I love these barbarian settlements, is that there's these cool little pathways you can take sometimes that are, that are risky. Let me just slow-mo it here. They're risky because, uh, you, sure, you've got this great high ground. You can fire down your arrows and do a lot of damage. But at the same time, if the enemies push through here, you're, you're, there's nowhere to go. You know, you're stuck over here. There's, it's a dead end, basically. It's a dead end, and it's going to be really tough to save the troops that are firing. You know, sometimes people like to retreat their archers to go back and hold the last thing. You can't do that if you get surrounded here. Uh, but Carthage, Carthage is actually pushing forward. Pushing forward and trying to take on these men. Excellent. Um, Carthaginians are still trying to hold this line, but they are taking on a lot of projectiles, a lot of archer fire, and taking uh, heavy casualties. Carthage over here also has troops kind of getting surrounded by Egypt and the Seleucids. And the elephants have now moved forward. All of the reserves have moved forward into the city. And pretty soon we're going to see a big push. Let's see what happens over here. Rome is now sending up reinforcements. We've got more Praetorian Guard. Oof. That's going to be tough. Here's the good news, though. The Thracian uh, warriors, they took out those, uh, those um, Praetorian Guard. But does Macedon have enough? They've got some pikemen in reserve over here. I like how they don't have their pikes out because it kind of keeps them hidden a little bit longer. Because, you know, if you're playing and you're zooming around, you just see swordsmen. You don't see pikemen because their pikes aren't out. Uh, also, they can maneuver a little bit quicker and then take their pikes out. So these Romans are surrounded, but here comes reinforcements. Praetorian Guard closing in. Archer support. Uh, it looks like the, the pikemen were spotted. Archer fire coming down on these pikes. They're trying to keep their shields up high. There they go. Pikes are now out and they're moving forward. Making sure no Romans cross this line. But look at this. Even the, uh, the Macedonian Thorax Swordsmen are just like, you know what? I've had enough of this. And they moved up. All right, I want to slow motion it really quick because you know what I would like to see here? Um, I would have liked to see the allies, uh, Carthage or Glacia, send over units to help Macedon because you could really focus out the Romans because these attackers over here, the Seleucids in Egypt, they're fighting this Carthaginian unit, still fighting them, and they're not, they're kind of taking their sweet time. So you could actually pull some units from this front and send them over here to help with the Romans, even just for a little bit, and then send them back over to this uh, side again uh, once the Egyptians and Seleucids start being aggressive and pushing. I'm not quite sure what the Carthaginians are doing here, though. 
I mean, they've got this really weird defense with a lot of openings, ways you can flank around them. No archers are up here to be seen. We even have the general over here falling back. Royal Peltis. Interesting, interesting. Egypt, though, is doing a, a good job here trying to clean up this. I mean, I cannot believe it, but this Libyan infantry its putting up a great fight. I think just now they're starting to waver. They've been surrounded for so long, just making the attackers bleed. And here we go. Here comes another. As soon as one unit breaks, they're going to send in another one. But they got to be careful because their flank can easily be exposed. And that's what I would do if I was Egypt. I'd try to get behind this unit. We do have some archers over here. I think they're firing at the uh, archers in reserve. Over yeah, oh yeah. Look at all the casualties over here. And Rome is making some ground, guys. I mean, Rome is a tough faction to fight. And they are now pushing towards the town center. They need to consolidate their forces here. The defenders need to consolidate. This is not good. Like, Carthage needs to fall back. Glacia needs to fall back. And unless they have a ton of hidden units here, which I doubt, but they could, um, they need to fall these troops back because uh, they are just too far pushed forward. They don't have enough men to hold all these choke points. They need to fall back and they need to try to use just the town center, which is one, two, three choke points? Three choke points. Now again, the downside of falling back and using these choke points is archer fire. You're kind of a sitting duck to archer fire, but hopefully you save some of your own archers to try to answer back to that. Um, but yeah, let's go back over here where we do have a little bit of a standoff. Uh, Glacian legionaries and Thracian warriors kind of looking looking at the enemy here. The Praetorian Guard who are in Testudo. Moving forward. It's good to see Rome though. You know, you don't get to see Rome all the time. I know they're like OP and stuff. So it can be tough to, uh, to see them in action. So a lot of people ban them because it's just like... God, they're, they're so strong. But maybe the Carthaginians and the Barbarians here are trying to get the attackers to exhaust their ammo. But uh, there's definitely a slow approach here from the attackers. I mean, I would... Well, I get it. I mean, I get it. Like, I think there's... There's not a lot of infantry left for the Egyptians in the Seleucids, so they're being very cautious about it, and they're not being too reckless. But they still have an elephant over here. They've got some pikemen over here, some silver shield swordsmen. They still have a decent amount of infantry. Also, there's some cav over here. Noble horse from the barbs. They might go for an aggressive push as soon as they uh, put their guard down, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, starting to see some more units appear here. And Rome, I mean, Rome is still looking pretty solid. They still have a decent amount of troops. The balance of power, guys, is pretty even. I would say it's slightly in favor of the attackers, which is pretty much on par on like, still a close game because the attackers should have the advantage a little bit because they are attacking defenses. Thorax swordsmen are surrounded over here, and that's going to be the last of them. And Macedon is pretty much fully just have retreated back to the town center. All right, Egypt is moving up along with the general. And Egypt's trying to clean up these Libyan infantry. And there we go, they're going for a push. But look at this, they keep sending down one unit at a time. You see this? The defenders are doing this wave defense and slowly just holding back these troops. I'm not sure why, but again, maybe they're just trying to buy time. Maybe they're trying to let their archers, let the attackers waste their ammo. I'm not sure, but yeah, now there's an opening. And the Silver Shield Swordsmen, 148 men, are going to, well, first off, they're going to flank around, get rid of this unit really fast. 
and most likely engage the troops over here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Thorak pikemen from Egypt pushing their way through. Carthage needs to fall back. They all need to fall back. Things have slowed down over here. I think Rome is kind of waiting for their allies. I think that's why they're kind of taking so long here. They're just waiting for their ally allies so they do a joint push on this uh, settlement for the center. Oh, nice. Actually, pretty good maneuver here by Carthage trying to get on the flank of these pikemen. Now the general is coming in to support and counter that flank. And Carthage is going to try to move around on the other side. The pikes are trying to shift over to try to stop them. And the barbs just completely left there. They need to get back in that fight. They're trying to do what they can to defeat those pikes, but they're going to need more skirmishers. Which They've got some mercenary Syrian archers that I assume are skirmishing the enemy Syrian archers. But uh, these Galatian legionaries have a very tough task ahead of themselves. They really got to hold this flank. If this falls, then this entire defense is going to be a disaster. Look at this. These pikes are having to shift around. and Some good maneuvers by Carthage, but now they're down to just two units here of Galatian legionaries. So it's almost, they've almost got this kite defense going on. You know, they're taking this slow. They're like, they've got one or two units holding and they've got these layers of defense. Let's see if they can hold here. They've got, let's see, sacred, ooh, sacred ban. Uh, this is a really good unit. They're going to be, they're going to be tough to take on. Hopefully for their sake, they don't have a lot of skirmishers and they can just ba sit back and skirmish these guys. Now these guys do have good armor, but still... It, it, you know, you're going to lose men to, to archer fire. Uh, now, thankfully, these archers have their swords out. And there comes a charge. Ah, uh, but here comes the pikes. Did they save archers for the pikes? There are some mercenary archers over here. Uh-oh. Look at this. Carthage out from nothing. These mercenary noble fighters and what I mean by out from nothing we saw them and they just appeared uh, or we didn't see them and they just appeared uh, so here comes the reinforcements we were talking about very nice play by Carthage I love it I mean a pretty solid defense it, you know honestly the reason I like this Carthaginian defense so much is that it's so like it's not very traditional like, usually what happens is as soon as you lose this outer part of the city, you fall back and you prepare the second tier. But instead, we're seeing more of a layered defense that is working decently, I think, and uh, being pretty effective. Now, unfortunately, these uh, legionaries got flanked by these pikes, but that's okay. They're holding over here, and they're actually breaking some Egyptian forces. And they're just archers, but still, they're breaking some units. But yeah, I'm curious to see. I mean, what else do they have? We've got some more. The Syrian archers need to move up. I'm not sure why they're not moving up the archers here and firing down on the pikes. You know? Oh, wait. Are they firing on the pikes? Hold on. Yes, they are. I'm seeing some uh, casualties here. Yes, they are. Excellent. Hell of a job. Hell of a job. Good job, defenders. They are making these pikes pay. They've got another pike unit over here. And look at, they're just, they're just falling back. And look at, okay, this is great. This is a great move by Carthage. You see what he did here? He formed a V, right? The reason he did that is because the pikes are going to have to choose. They either go here or they go here. 
and it doesn't matter which side they choose they're gonna get flanked and these pikes are gonna die very quickly very good move by Carthage and that's gonna take out a very important unit which of course are pikemen they're pretty key to the final stages of a siege battle lots of archers here in the back though that well they have their swords out which could mean they're out of ammo In a nice push here, pikemen moving up, Thorak pikemen, they've got to deal with that. You might want to send up some archers on this side to try to slow down these pikemen. And here comes the flank guys, and a cav charge, my god. Noble horse. Why did the infantry leave? I mean, he, he might as well send in the infantry and help. Look at the sacred band didn't even fight. They're, they're hanging back. Saving them for the end. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Seleucids going through a tiny little gap here. And now the sacred band are going to have to come over and support the flank. This is a great battle. Great battle. Uh, back over this way, we've got the battle against the Romans and Macedonians. And that's still going on. It looks actually looks like it's uh, still very close, but it seems like the Romans are taking a lot of casualties. And then we've got uh, some swordsmen over here, Thorax swordsmen hanging back. But yeah, this is still very close. It looks like... Macedon can hold at least they can hold for enough time until maybe if Carthage wins over here but here comes that noble horse again trying to quickly break this pike unit and that should do the job I like this defense very you know one thing you know the defenders were extremely patient I really like that extremely patient and they, they didn't show all their cards at once. You know, they held back a lot of units and are using them just when they need them. Uh, now, they do have to deal with the pikes over here. Egypt doing a good job of flanking with these pikes, surrounding the sacred band. But, of course, the noble horse is going to get their way, or going to move their way over here. Also, archer fire is hitting the backs of these pikemen. So, good use of the archers. Here we go. Here comes the general. General, the Carthaginian general moving forward. And it appears that the Egyptians and Seleucids are going to put all of their cards, all of their forces towards this path, which is going to be good for Carthage because now they can focus all of their units and they're going to try to hold this line. But also, you got to be careful. There is a flanking option for the attackers over on this road. Here we go. But actually, Carthage is going to let their troops kind of fight alone there. The Sacred Band kind of surrounded. You see that? The Sacred Band are left alone. He's not going to send them in to support. Instead, he's going to hold back and wait for them to, to push forward. This is a really good battle, guys, so far. Just really good maneuvers from both sides. Um, very few mistakes. Here comes a charge here. Going into some archers. Excellent charge by the general. Again, cleaning up, cleaning up their forces. Even if this archer unit was out of ammo, it's still a mind game. You know, it's still like, oh, I lost a unit from a cav charge. Like, dang it. And they're going to actually capture this gate. Silver shield swordsmen moving to the front. Do the defenders have enough, though? Do they have enough to take on these elephants? And this was a good move by the Seleucids to use their elephants at the very end of the battle. And the reason that's so important is because you're hoping that the defenders will not have ammo to use fire arrows. But, unfortunately for the sake of the elephants, they are running amok, they are out of control, and they are getting hit with fire arrows. It's causing fear. Lots of archers still alive. Lots of... Good use by the defenders being, again, being very 
conservative, being patient, and now using all of their cards at this point. They're using everything they got to defeat the elephant, and the elephant, uh, lucky for them, they calm down, um, and but still, they got to deal with those archers. Uh, what do we got? Cav? Yep, some Galatian Noble Cav trying to slow down this flank. We got another Cav unit of Noble Horse moving over into this position. Is he going to go for another charge? Let's see. Maybe he's going to try to go for the tree line or something. Or he's just scouting. Not really sure. I don't think he wants to give up this gate. He goes in for a charge. It's a pretty late charge, but... He's just, I, I don't really like the use of the noble noble horse here. Because the horse is... Well, okay, good, good. He's falling back. I was going to say, if he left them in the fight, oof, that would have been bad. It, it would, You would have just thrown away your calf if you left him in a melee against Galatian Royal Guard. But yeah, he needs to keep doing cycle charges. Oh, and here we go. Here comes this push. The Seleucids moving in with some silver, silver shield swordsmen taking on the mercenary noble fighters. I think they're going to quickly try to flank around. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to flank around here. And Rome is pretty much defeated, but you could say the same about Macedon. Macedon does have a couple solid units here and there, but um, yeah. It's going to be tough. Uh, it's it's going to be tough for the defenders. I mean, they've done all that they could, but I I just don't know if they have enough. Here we go. They need to reform quickly. They've got troops coming in. There they go. And look at this calf. Excellent use of the calf. Oh, they still have some pikemen over here. See, the problem with still having pikemen on the battlefield is that the archers are going to have to pick a target. It's either go for the pikemen and go for the elephants. Honestly, at this stage of the battle, I'd say go for the elephants. Get them off the battlefield. Maybe you can make them run amok and you can cause them to kill their own units. But this would be, this is the prime target right here. You've got to take out this unit. Also, because the general is in it, if you can take out this elephant unit without it killing too many of your own men, it could be huge. Noble fighters ha are having to take on the elephants alone. There we go. They're running out of control. Let's see which way they go. Sometimes they go out of control and they go towards the enemy, which is always always a good thing. But all oh, the noble fighters are breaking. They need infantry reinforcements. And we might see the royal peltis of Macedon head over that way. Not sure. Rome is ha hanging back. Excellent. Rome is also being very patient. Yes, he pretty much have lo he's lost his army. But the fact that he's just holding is buying time for his allies to start causing damage. Because what would happen, let's say if the Romans pushed in like this, right? They would have been wiped out already. And then Macedon with their leftover troops would be able to send them to this front and help with this battle. But since he's just hanging back like this... Macedon's having to leave all their troops here for when they push in, and that leaves this front line less, you know, with less support. But the archers are still focusing fire on these elephants, trying to get them off the battlefield. And look at this, Macedon. I'm sorry, the, the Carthaginians are pushing forward their noble fighters. Trying to bring the fight to them. We also have the general taking on... Some Galatian Royal Guard. They must have got a really good charge off on them. And they're trying to take them out. Things are getting desperate, guys. Things are getting desperate. There we go. They're breaking a Royal Guard. That's a huge loss for Egypt. That's such a good unit. And the Romans also have some Cav over here. Romans trying to get a creative with the Cav. But I guess they couldn't get into the gates. And now they're just kind of taking losses from Arrow Fire. Uh, but let's see, what are these uh, noble horse? They're going to move around. Try to get a charge opportunity. So there's 10 minutes left in this replay, and it's just an absolute slaughter. Steady. Steady 
All right, um, Galatia, Royal Guard, trying to take this arrow tower. That's a good move right there. That's going to be like a whole another archer unit they can use with unlimited ammo. Uh, the Romans have now pushed over on this side. So the Romans are getting aggressive. They got the Praetorian Guard. Praetorian Guard doing what they need to do. But can Macedon hold? Look, he's even he's sending units back. Now we have the general. He has to fall back and try to hold this flank. What is... Is someone throwing stones? Yeah, we've got uh, some slingers from Macedon. Here we go. This is huge. Can the, can the Macedonian general hold against the Praetorian guard? The pikes are now shifting on the eagle cohort. They were trying to surround this Praetorian Guard. Unfortunately, the Pikes now find themselves surrounded. They've got to quickly turn and face the Praetorian Guard. Rome is now being a headache for the defenders. The elephants are still alive and well. Wait, seriously? The elephants haven't lost a single unit. They're still at 24 out of 24. That's insane. That is frustrating. That is frustrating. Yeah, guys, I'm going to be honest. It looks like this is going to be a grim defense for the defenders. Oh, well, look at this, man. Carthage is out here still being aggressive. Who is this Carthage player? I really like the tactics here. I really like it. At first, I kind of hated it, but then I was like, I see what he's doing. He's being super aggressive and very, like, right now he's focusing down defending troops. He's making his two units seem much bigger than they really are by just slowly picking off small units of the attackers. This is so close. Absolute close battle. This is so great. Now we have a battle of generals over here. Egypt's general is taking on the Galatian noble horse general. And Carthage is going to win here. They definitely need to come. They need to kill this Egyptian general. They must. They no, 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 no. Where are you going? Carthage kill that general Maybe there's a bigger target. Maybe he wants to go for these archers. I'm not sure. Oh My god, this is so close guys This is so at least he's sending the infantry. They've got to move quickly though You don't want your ally to lose his general Macedon is trying to hold back these guys with with a couple troops. The general, look at this. The Macedonian general defeats the Praetorian Guard. And Rome is out of this battle. They've got some cav over here. But really not enough to put a big presence on the battlefield. And the general is chasing them down. I guess he just wants to get rid of them. Oh my god. And the Egyptian general is wavering. And the noble horse is chasing down some archers. Where is the Carthaginian general? Here he is. But how do you kill the elephants? How do you kill them? They still have not lost a single elephant. And now they're going to trample this noble fighter unit. Can a cav charge do anything? I'm not sure. And here comes Rome with some cav. The last stand of these Macedonian uh, archers. This is going to be great. What a great ending. Macedon, of course, we can't see him now, but they do have some units over here. They're probably going to put up a last stand. And yes, they do go in for a cab charge. Oh, boy. These elephants, man. They have been a thorn in the side of the defenders for so long. And, it, you know, you got to be careful of riding your general around this settlement because there are arrow towers that can pick them off. But the generals are going at it. I mean, the cav, they're losing a lot of troops. Elephants. Oh, the elephants are starting to drop. The elephants are starting to drop. And now we have the noble horse coming in to bring the fight to these, these elephants. Boom. Good cav charge. Let's see if that helps at all. I don't know, guys. Oh, Mastodon is actually pushing troops out. Look at this. Macedon is sending pikemen forward. They're not waiting. They've got to be careful, though. They can't let this Roman cav 
get behind their pikes. They've got to use these archers a bit of a flank. Oh, boy. This is going to sting. But they kind of just have to sit there and take it. Sit there and take it. No, they're going to... No. They're going to go right for the pikes. He let them charge in. And the pikes are being crushed. What is this? We've got a scorpion. A Roman scorpion. And the elephants are still putting up a great fight. They still have 16. And all the, I mean, all the defenders can do here is just fight and hope that they can break these elephants. Mastodon's general. What happened with Mastodon? I don't understand why Mastodon sent in their army piecemeal. Like, he should have had his general with those pikes close by. Or they should have just held right here. Why did he send the pikes forward like that? I'm not too sure, but it's up to the Macedonian general to hold this battle and try to win here. At the same time, they've got to look out for this calf. Calf can flank around. <sighs> the general battle, the battle between calf and elephants still going on. The elephants are exhausted. Carthaginians are uh, active and the noble horse are exhausting, but they're losing decisively. Apparently, they are losing decisively, and I just don't think they're going to be able to do it. And, yep, the general is finding himself surrounded. Where are these archers going? They need to go in and support their general. And it looks like as this battle goes on, this is going to be attackers. Oh, wait, hold on, though. Hold on, the elephants are wavering, but at the same time, the Carthaginian general is wavering. One of these general, oh, there we go. Uh, unfortunately, Carthage is out, but, but the Glacian general is still active. And he's going to move and he's going to take out this artillery. The archers have now charged in, but it's too late. The Macedonian general is breaking. What an absolute ending to this battle. Here we go. They're going to go for this scorpion. Let's see if they can take out this Roman scorpion. Woo! They're going to try to break it really quick. Now we have the Roman cab charging in. I don't... Oh, wait! Hold on! The Macedonian general, general rallies! He rallies! But... Yes, yes... The Barbarian General, the Barbarian General defeats the Roman Cav. Now this is his moment of truth. This is his time to shine. And oh my god, the Seleucids are starting to waver. Can this General get over there and support? Let's see, let's see. Come on. Oh, oh no, the Macedon's breaking. They're, this Cav is trying to get out of these stones and they're getting hit from this arrow tower. It's a mess. But there we go, they break through and... Egypt's going to turn and try to face this cab and try to soften up this charge by a counter charge. Is this enough? This Glacian Royal Guard, they are very good. They are very good. And there's still 46 of them. This cab, though, is going to cycle charge. It's all he can really do. The general is trying to make a line here. This Macedonian general trying to hold. And the archers, these brave archer slingers, taking on Silver Shield Swordsmen. They're falling back. What is going on? Oh, a charge into the silver shield. They were not ready for that. Good, good change of targets there. And now the archers are charging in. And they're causing them to waver. And look at this maneuver here by the general of Macedon, the royal Peltis. Oh my god, but yet they keep standing. This is a battle down to just a handful of troops. We got like a hundred troops fighting here. Another good charge right in the back of these Galatian Royal Guard. Unfortunately, the slingers break. It's down to two generals. It's down to Macedon and the Barbarian General. Can they win this one? Once again, these troops are breaking. The Galatian Royal Guard. Seleucids are breaking. This might be the end. And this might... Look, the bounce of power is still dead even. Look, at they recover. They recover. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no. The silver shields are gone. And now it's down to the Royal Peltis. Oh, I think, oh my god. What a turnaround. What a battle.
this was great. This was a great battle, and this is going to be a victory for the defenders. Right at the end, they pull it out. By the skin of their teeth, they win this battle with some fantastic tactics. Fantastic tactics. I haven't seen a battle this good in a very, very long time. Uh, we had, I mean, Carthage almost had this strange defense. I love the Carthaginian defense because it was almost like a, it was like, almost like a, like the defense looked really bad at the beginning, but it was actually genius at the end. And the way he like conserved his troops and he pushed for forward at certain times and it was really great. And then the Cav, the general Cav of Carthage and, and the um, Galatian general was excellent. The elephant, the use of the elephant was great, um, but it just didn't work out in the end. And uh, yeah, costly enemy victory, but a victory nonetheless for the defenders. <sighs> that was great. Um, so we've got an excellent team of, from these attackers. We have Armored, who was... Um, Armored was the Carthaginians. We have Sergeant Major Joe, who's part of the 14th Brooklyn. Uh, he was Galatia, did a great job with his general. And then Dan was Macedon. So, and they were taken on, I mean, props to this attacking team. Uh, these players right here are really good. But uh, props to this attacking team putting up a fantastic fight. A really good fight. And, uh, yeah, what? look how close these kills were. It was a great battle. I mean, I don't even... I, I think I've said enough. I think I'll let the battle speak for its, for itself. Let me just show you uh, really quick all of the kills. Look at the Elephant getting 302 kills. Here's the Roman army. Here's the Egyptian army. Carthaginians, uh, Glacia, and the Macedonians. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, what a great fight. Again, I hope you had your snacks and drinks because that was an exciting one. Thank you so much to all the players who participated in this battle. It was a great one. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you disliked it, uh, don't forget to leave a dislike. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you uh, so much. So, I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield.